I had been scrolling through Airbnb for what felt like an eternity, desperate to escape the city's Halloween madness. Just when I was about to give up, there it was, a Victorian-era mansion in the middle of nowhere, offering a special Halloween discount. The host, Mrs. Wainwright, had a five-star rating. Reviews praised the mansion's old-world charm and haunting beauty. I was sold. I booked it, packed a weekend bag, and set off. The drive was longer than I expected. Civilization seemed to fade away with each passing mile, replaced by dense forests and open fields. My GPS lost signal more than once, but I pressed on, guided by handwritten directions I'd jotted down. Finally, the silhouette of a wrought iron gate appeared in my headlights. It creaked open as if beckoned by my arrival. Driving up the gravel path, the crunching sound beneath my tires seemed to echo in the emptiness around me. The mansion came into view, its grandeur framed against the backdrop of a setting sun. I parked and took a deep breath, trying to dispel the knot of unease forming in my stomach. Before I could even knock, the door swung open. Ah, you must be my weekend guest. Welcome to Wainwright Manor, exclaimed Mrs. Wainwright. Her smile was unnaturally wide, her eyes twinkling in a way that seemed almost manic. Thank you, Mrs. Wainwright. The place looks amazing, I replied, stepping inside. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. This old house has many surprises, she said, her voice tinged with a strange excitement. Surprises? Should I be worried? I asked, half-joking. Only if you're easily scared, she chuckled. It's Halloween, after all. As I entered the grand foyer, the door closed behind me with a resounding thud. A shiver ran down my spine, but I brushed it off. After all, I was here for a relaxing weekend, and I had no reason to doubt the five-star reviews and the host's enthusiastic welcome. Shall we begin the tour? Mrs. Wainwright asked, gesturing towards the grand staircase. Of course, I replied, still oblivious to the fact that my weekend getaway was about to turn into something far more unsettling. Mrs. Wainwright led the way, her heels clicking against the wooden floors, each step echoing through the grand halls of the mansion. We passed through a series of lavishly decorated rooms, each one a time capsule filled with antique furniture, faded portraits, and ornate chandeliers that hung from the ceilings like forgotten jewels. Ah, uh, this is the drawing room, Mrs. Wainwright announced, gesturing towards a room filled with Victorian-era furniture. Many guests love to spend their evenings here, reading or playing the piano. It's beautiful, I said, genuinely impressed. You've maintained it so well. Oh, this old house practically takes care of itself, she replied, her eyes twinkling mysteriously. We continued down a long corridor adorned with more portraits. The faces in the painting seemed to follow me, their eyes filled with an emotion I couldn't quite place. Was it sorrow, longing, or something darker? Finally, we reached the end of the corridor. There stood a door, different from the others. It was older, its wood darkened by age, and it had a heavy padlock securing it. What's in this room? I asked, my curiosity piqued. Mrs. Wainwright hesitated for a moment, her cheerful demeanor faltering. Oh, that? Just some family heirlooms, old furniture and such, nothing of interest, really. Family heirlooms on Halloween sounds like the beginning of a ghost story, I joked, trying to lighten the mood. Mrs. Wainwright forced a laugh. Oh, we have plenty of those, but let's not get sidetracked, your room is this way. As we walked away, I couldn't shake the feeling that the locked door was hiding something far more sinister than family heirlooms. And as Mrs. Wainwright led me to my room... I couldn't help but wonder what kind of secrets this old mansion was keeping. I was about to find out. Mrs. Wainwright showed me to my room, which was as grand and antique-filled as the rest of the house. I hope you find everything to your liking, she said, her voice still tinged with that unsettling cheerfulness. Thank you, Mrs. Wainwright. Everything looks great, I replied, although a sense of unease was beginning to settle in. If you need anything, just give a shout. Good night. With that, she closed the door behind her, leaving me alone in the vast room. I unpacked and settled into the creaky bed. The room was adorned with period-appropriate decor, from the heavy drapes to the ornate mirror on the wall. An antique clock ticked softly from the bedside table. Despite the room's beauty, it felt like I was sleeping in a museum, a beautiful but lifeless space. As the night wore on, sleep eluded me. The house was eerily quiet, amplifying every small sound the ticking of the clock, the rustling of the wind outside, the creaking of the old wooden structure. Just when I thought I might finally drift off, I heard it. Footsteps above my room, soft but deliberate, pacing back and forth. Then came a sound that made my blood run cold. Faint laughter, distant but unmistakable. I sat up, 
my eyes darting to the antique clock on the bedside table. It was 3 a.m. My mind raced as I tried to make sense of what I was hearing. Could it be other guests? But the footsteps and laughter seemed to be coming from the direction of the locked room Mrs. Wainwright had shown me earlier. Curiosity battled with fear as I considered my options. Should I investigate the sounds or should I stay put, hoping they would go away? As I pondered this, the footsteps and laughter ceased as abruptly as they had begun, plunging the house back into unsettling silence. I lay back down, my heart still pounding, and stared at the ceiling. What was behind that locked door? And more importantly, did I really want to find out? The next morning, I was out of the mansion before the sun had fully risen. I didn't bother saying goodbye to Mrs. Wainwright. I just wanted to put as much distance between me and that house as possible. As I drove away, my phone buzzed with a notification. It was from Airbnb asking me to rate my stay. I hesitated, my finger hovering over the screen. How could I possibly put into words the unsettling experience I'd had? Before I could decide, another notification popped up. It was a message from Mrs. Wainwright. My heart sank as I opened it. Thank you for staying with us. We hope you enjoyed your time at Wainwright Manor. We've added a new experience based on your stay. We think future guests will find it intriguing. Curious and somewhat alarmed, I clicked on the link she'd provided. It led me to a new listing for Wainwright Manor. The locked room experience. For the brave only. The description was vague but hinted at unearthly sounds and an experience you'll never forget. I was about to close the app when another message from Mrs. Wainwright appeared. This time it was an audio clip. With a sense of dread, I pressed play. To my horror, it was the sound of my own laughter mingled with other unfamiliar voices, all emanating from what I was now certain was the locked room. My hands trembled as I put the phone down. What had I gotten myself into? What was really happening in that locked room? And most disturbingly, how had my own laughter become a part of it? I was in a bit of a bind. My company had just informed me that I needed to attend a crucial business meeting in the city, and it was happening in two days. Hotels were out of the question. A big event had them all but fully booked. So there I was, scrolling through Airbnb, my laptop balanced precariously on my knee as I sat on my couch. Page after page, I saw listings that were either too far from the meeting venue or way out of my budget. Just when I was about to give up and consider commuting from a ridiculous distance, I found it. A cozy modern apartment right in the heart of downtown. The picture showcased a clean space with modern amenities, and it was just a few blocks from where my meeting would be. But what really caught my eye were the reviews. A wonderful stay, one read. Marcus is the perfect host, said another. Every review was a glowing endorsement, and the host, Marcus, had a five-star rating. It was almost too good to be true, especially considering the reasonable price. I hesitated for a moment. Could this be a scam? But then I looked at the clock and realized time was running out. I needed a place to stay, and this seemed like my best option. Taking a deep breath, I clicked book now. Almost immediately, my phone buzzed with a notification. It was a message from Marcus. Thank you for booking. I look forward to hosting you. You're going to love it here. Relieved, I closed my laptop. It looked like I had found my solution. A perfect place to stay with a host who seemed more than accommodating. This last-minute booking would lead to one of the most unsettling experiences of my life. I arrived in the city on Halloween afternoon. The streets were bustling with people in costumes and decorations adorned the buildings. Witches, pumpkins, and skeletons seemed to be around every corner, adding a festive yet eerie atmosphere to the city. The apartment building itself was modern and well-maintained, and even the lobby had been decorated with cobwebs and a faux graveyard. I took the elevator up, my anticipation growing with each floor. When the doors opened, I found the apartment door slightly ajar. Marcus greeted me with a warm smile, his face framed by Halloween decorations that hung on the door. Welcome. You've arrived on the spookiest day of the year, he said, stepping aside to let me in. The place looks great and I love the Halloween decor, I replied. Looking around the immaculate apartment that was tastefully adorned with subtle Halloween touches, a pumpkin here, a skull there. I hope you have a comfortable stay. I'll be in and out, but if you need anything, just give me a call, Marcus said, handing me a set of keys. Will do, thanks, I replied, setting down my luggage. As Marcus left, he turned back and said, Oh, by the way, make yourself at home, truly, and enjoy the Halloween festivities. The city really comes alive. His words were friendly, but something in his tone made me pause. 
It was as if he was hinting at something more, something I couldn't quite put my finger on. Before I could ponder it further, he was gone, leaving me alone in the Halloween-adorned apartment. I shook off the uneasy feeling and decided to unpack. After all, it was Halloween and the city awaited. What could possibly go wrong? After unpacking, I decided to head out and explore the city's Halloween festivities. The streets were alive with energy, kids trick-or-treating, adults in elaborate costumes, and the distant sound of Halloween parties in full swing. Yet as I walked through the crowds, I couldn't shake off the odd feeling Marcus's parting words had left me with. I returned to the apartment late in the evening, my feet sore but my spirits high. However, as I entered, I noticed something strange. The Halloween decorations that had adorned the apartment were gone. It was as if they had never been there. Confused, I pulled out my phone and called Marcus. No answer. I tried again. Still no answer. Growing concerned, I started to look around the apartment more closely. That's when I noticed another odd detail. The family photos that had been on the mantle were missing, replaced by generic impersonal artwork. It was as if the apartment had been stripped of anything personal, anything that could tie it to Marcus or any other human being. I sat down trying to make sense of it all. Had Marcus removed the decorations and photos? If so, why and where was he now? My phone buzzed, snapping me out of my thoughts. It was a message from Marcus. Hope you're enjoying your stay. Remember, make yourself at home. The message should have been comforting, but in the context of the empty apartment and the missing host, it felt like a warning. Or perhaps, an invitation to a Halloween mystery that I was now unwittingly a part of. The message from Marcus left me more unsettled than reassured. I decided to do a little investigating. If Marcus had been in the apartment to remove the decorations, there had to be some sign of it. I started with the living room, examining it closely. Nothing seemed out of place except for the missing decorations and family photos. I moved on to the kitchen, then the bathroom, and finally the small storage room. That's when I noticed it, a door behind a bookshelf that I hadn't seen before. My heart pounding, I pushed the bookshelf aside and unlocked the door. What I found was a small room filled with Halloween decorations, similar to the ones that had adorned the apartment earlier. But that wasn't what caught my eye. It was the wall opposite the door. It was covered in photos, photos of me. From years ago, from recent times, and shockingly, from earlier that evening when I was out enjoying the Halloween festivities. My phone buzzed, jolting me out of my horrified trance. It was another message from Marcus. I see you found my collection. Happy Halloween. Make yourself at home. You're going to be here for a while. Chills ran down my spine. I rushed out of the room, bolted the apartment door behind me, and ran down the stairs. As I reached the lobby, I glanced back one last time. The elevator doors were opening, but no one was there. I didn't stop to ponder the mystery. I just knew I had to get as far away as possible. As I stepped out into the Halloween night, blending into the crowd of costumes and celebrations, I realized that the most terrifying experience I'd had wasn't out on the streets with the ghosts and ghouls, but in a seemingly ordinary apartment with a host who had vanished into thin air. Halloween has always been more than just a holiday for me. It's an experience, a season that I look forward to all year long. This year I wanted to elevate that experience. No more generic haunted houses or predictable horror movie marathons. I wanted something authentic, something that would make this Halloween unforgettable. So there I was, curled up on my couch with a horror movie playing in the background, scrolling through Airbnb on my laptop. I sifted through countless listings, apartments, houses, even some castles. But they all seemed too ordinary. I was about to call it a night when I stumbled upon it. A rustic cabin set deep in the woods, far removed from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. The picture showcased a charming, if somewhat weathered, wooden cabin surrounded by an ocean of trees. It promised a genuine back-to-nature experience, complete with hiking trails and a nearby lake. The host, Sarah, had a 4.5-star rating and the reviews were overwhelmingly positive. Guests praised the beautiful scenery, the tranquility, and Sarah's hospitality. But one review stood out from the rest. It was less effusive and more cryptic. Be prepared for the unexpected. The words sent a shiver down my spine but also piqued my curiosity. What did they mean by unexpected? Was it a warning or merely a challenge for the more adventurous traveler? I looked at the calendar hanging on my wall. Halloween was circled in red, a day that held so much promise but was still an empty slate. I hesitated for a moment, my cursor hovering over the book now button. Then, throwing caution to the wind, I clicked it. 
Almost immediately, my phone buzzed with a notification. It was a message from Sarah. Thank you for booking. I look forward to hosting you. The woods are especially spirited during Halloween. Spirited. I mused, contemplating the words double meaning as I closed my laptop. I had just committed to spending Halloween alone in a secluded cabin in the woods, based on a listing that was both inviting and slightly ominous. What could possibly go south? The drive to the cabin was an adventure in itself. The paved roads gave way to gravel and then to dirt, as civilization receded in my rearview mirror. The forest grew denser with each mile, the trees towering like ancient guardians of the land. My GPS had long since lost signal, but Sarah's handwritten directions, which she had emailed me, were surprisingly easy to follow. They led me through a labyrinth of winding roads until finally the cabin came into view. It was exactly as the pictures had promised. A rustic, charming abode nestled in a clearing surrounded by an endless sea of trees. The setting sun cast golden rays through the foliage, painting the scene in a warm, almost magical light. It was the perfect Halloween retreat, or so it seemed. As I stepped out of the car, the first thing I noticed was the silence. It was a profound, almost heavy quietude, broken only by the distant hoot of an owl and the rustling of leaves in the wind. I took a deep breath, the crisp autumn air filling my lungs and approached the cabin. Pinned to the door was a welcoming note, written in elegant cursive. Make yourself at home, it read, and enjoy the true spirit of Halloween in these woods. The note was a charming touch, but something about the phrase true spirit of Halloween sent a shiver down my spine. It echoed Sarah's message in the cryptic review I had read. What did it mean? What was the true spirit of these woods? Pushing aside my growing apprehension, I unlocked the door and stepped inside. The cabin was cozy and well-furnished, exuding a rustic charm. A fireplace stood ready for use and the kitchen was stocked with all the essentials. But what caught my eye was a bookshelf near the fireplace. It was filled with books on local folklore, legends, and even some that looked like handwritten journals. The titles hinted at tales of haunted woods, mysterious creatures, and unexplained phenomena. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the forest was swallowed by darkness, and the cabin's interior took on an eerie dimness lit only by the fading twilight. I was alone, miles away from anyone, in a cabin filled with tales of the unknown. The unexpected that the review had hinted at suddenly felt like a looming promise. I couldn't help but wonder, as the first stars appeared in the night sky, what experiences, natural or supernatural, awaited me in this secluded Halloween haven? The first order of business was to light the fireplace. The sun had set and the temperature was dropping rapidly. I struck a match and watched as the fire roared to life, casting dancing shadows across the cabin's walls. The warmth was comforting, but the flickering light also gave the room an unsettling, almost surreal quality. I decided to make some dinner. The kitchen was well stocked, just as Sarah had promised in the listing. As I cooked, I couldn't shake off the feeling that I was being watched. I glanced towards the windows, half expecting to see a face staring back at me. But there was nothing, just the impenetrable darkness of the woods. After eating, I sat down with one of the folklore books from the shelf. It was filled with local legends, stories of spirits that roamed the woods, of mysterious lights seen floating between the trees, of hikers who had gone missing without a trace. Each tale was more unsettling than the last and I began to question the wisdom of spending Halloween night in such a place. Just then, a sudden gust of wind howled through the trees, rattling the cabin's windows. I jumped, my heart pounding. It was just the wind, I told myself, but the sound had shattered the silence like a scream in the night. I put the book down and decided to call it an early night. As I lay in bed, listening to the creaking of the cabin and the distant sounds of the forest, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The cabin, the woods, the legends, they all seemed to be pieces of a puzzle that I was now a part of whether I liked it or not. As I finally drifted off to sleep, a thought crossed my mind, a question that filled me with both anticipation and dread. What did the true spirit of Halloween mean in a place like this? And was I prepared to find out? I was jolted awake by a sound, a soft knock that seemed to come from the front door. My eyes darted to my smartphone on the nightstand. It read 12 a.m. Midnight. My heart pounded in my chest as I lay there, straining my ears for any other sounds. Another knock, this time a bit louder, confirmed that I hadn't imagined it. Summoning every ounce of courage, I got out of bed and tiptoed to the window. I cautiously peered through the curtains, half expecting to see someone or something standing there. But the darkness outside was complete. 
a void that even the moonlight couldn't penetrate. The logical part of me argued that it could be an animal, or perhaps a tree branch knocking against the door. But logic seemed like a feeble defense against the growing sense of dread that enveloped me. I thought about the folklore book, the legends of spirits and mysterious disappearances, and the cryptic warning to be prepared for the unexpected. Another knock, this one more insistent, jolted me from my thoughts. It was followed by what sounded like footsteps, slowly moving away from the door and towards the window where I stood. My breath caught in my throat as a shadow passed by the window, too human-like to be dismissed but too indistinct to identify. I retreated from the window, my mind racing. Should I call for help? The realization hit me. I was miles away from the nearest neighbor and my phone had no signal. I was utterly terrifyingly alone. Just as I was grappling with this thought, a twisted voice pierced the silence coming from just outside the cabin. Candy. It rasped as if struggling to form the word. Give me candy. The voice was neither fully human nor entirely something else. It was a grotesque blend that sent shivers down my spine. It was a voice that didn't belong in the realm of the living. Yet here it was, asking for something as innocent as candy on a night dedicated to horror. As I stood there, paralyzed by fear, another message from Sarah flashed through my mind. Enjoy the true spirit of Halloween in these woods. Was this the true spirit she had referred to? A test of courage, a confrontation with the unknown, or perhaps something far more sinister? The footsteps and the twisted voice seemed to fade away, swallowed by the sounds of the wind and the forest. But the sense of unease remained, a haunting presence that refused to be ignored. As I crawled back into bed, I knew that sleep would be elusive. The cabin, the woods, and the midnight visitor, along with that horrifying voice, had all conspired to turn this Halloween into an experience that was as authentic as it was terrifying. And so I lay there in the dark, eyes wide open, listening to the sounds of the night, each one a reminder that I was a stranger in these woods, a visitor in a world that held mysteries far beyond my understanding. Every Halloween I try to do something out of the ordinary, something that would make the holiday memorable. This year, while scrolling through Airbnb for a unique experience, I stumbled upon something that caught my eye, a listing for a luxurious mansion promising an unforgettable Halloween night. The host, Eleanor, had a five-star rating, but what intrigued me were the photos. The mansion was elaborately decorated for Halloween, with everything from carved pumpkins to life-size skeletons and intricate spiderweb designs. The description was even more captivating. It promised not just accommodation, but an elegant Halloween soiree, complete with a masquerade ball, a haunted house experience, and a midnight feast. The catch? The listing was only available for one night, Halloween, and it was incredibly expensive. But then again, how often do you get to spend Halloween in a mansion? I was skeptical. Who was this Eleanor? How did she manage to maintain a five-star rating with such an extravagant listing? I scrolled down to the reviews, expecting some clarification. Strangely, the reviews were overwhelmingly positive but incredibly vague. Phrases like an experience like no other and a night to remember were repeated, but no one went into specifics. After some internal debate and a glance at my mundane Halloween plans scribbled on my calendar, I decided to take the plunge. My finger hovered over the book button for a moment before I finally clicked it. Instantly, a message popped up from Eleanor. Thank you for booking the Halloween experience at my mansion. I look forward to hosting you. Please remember, costumes are not just encouraged, they are mandatory. I sat back, both excited and slightly uneasy. I had just committed to spending Halloween night in a mysterious mansion hosted by someone I knew nothing about. The allure was irresistible, but the questions were piling up. What kind of experience was I really signing up for? And more importantly, who, or what, would I encounter there? The drive to the mansion was like something out of a fairy tale, albeit a dark one. The GPS led me through winding roads, each turn taking me further away from the familiarity of the city. Finally, the trees parted to reveal the mansion, lit up in eerie shades of green and purple, casting long shadows that danced like restless spirits. As I pulled up the long driveway, my heart pounded with a mix of excitement and apprehension. I parked the car and took a deep breath before stepping out. The grandeur of the mansion was overwhelming, its towering facade adorned with intricate Halloween decorations that seemed both elegant and haunting. I approached the entrance and rang the doorbell, which echoed with a grand, almost operatic tone. The door creaked open 
and I was greeted by a butler wearing a mask that resembled a raven. Welcome, he said, his voice muffled by the mask. Eleanor has been expecting you. Your room is ready and the festivities will begin shortly. I stepped inside and was immediately struck by the interior. It was a strange blend of opulence and Halloween kitsch, with grand chandeliers hanging beside fake spider webs and portraits of distinguished-looking individuals sharing wall space with mounted animal skulls. The butler led me to my room, which was just as lavishly decorated. Please make yourself comfortable, he said before leaving. The masquerade ball will begin in the grand ballroom in one hour. As I unpacked, I couldn't shake off a growing sense of unease. Everything seemed perfect, almost too perfect, and yet something felt off. I looked out the window and saw other guests arriving, all wearing elaborate costumes and masks. Who were these people, and what was the story behind this extravagant Halloween event? I put on my costume and mask, taking one last look in the mirror. I was about to immerse myself in what promised to be a Halloween experience like no other. But as I made my way to the grand ballroom, I couldn't help but wonder, was I just another guest at this extravagant affair, or was I stepping into a role in a story that had yet to reveal itself? The grand ballroom was a spectacle to behold. An ornate chandelier hung from the ceiling, casting a dim, ethereal light over the room. Masked guests waltzed gracefully to classical music, their faces hidden but their eyes revealing a mix of delight and intrigue. I felt like I had stepped into another era or perhaps another world altogether. As I mingled among the guests, I couldn't shake off the feeling that I was an outsider, intruding on a secret gathering. Conversations seemed coded, filled with subtle references and veiled meanings that I couldn't quite grasp. Everyone was impeccably polite, but their masked faces made it impossible to read their true emotions. Then I finally met Eleanor. She was dressed in a vintage gown, her face hidden behind an elaborate mask adorned with feathers and jewels. I'm so glad you could make it, she said, her voice as enigmatic as her appearance. I trust you're finding the evening entertaining. Before I could answer, the clock began to strike midnight. The room fell silent, the music stopping as if on cue. Eleanor raised her glass and announced, let the true festivities begin. That's when things started to feel truly unsettling. The guests began to disperse, leaving the ballroom through various hidden doors that I hadn't noticed before. Eleanor gave me a knowing look and said, I believe you'll find what you're looking for in the library. Confused but intrigued, I made my way to the library, my sense of unease growing with each step. What were these true festivities Eleanor spoke of? And what was I supposed to find in the library? As I entered the dimly lit room filled with ancient books and artifacts, I realized that the night was far from over, and as the door closed behind me, sealing me off from the grandeur and the guests, I couldn't help but wonder, was this elaborate masquerade a mere party or was it a facade for something far more sinister? The library was unlike any I had ever seen. The walls were lined with ancient books, their spines cracked and faded with age. The room was dimly lit, casting shadows that seemed to dance and flicker like restless spirits. A sense of history and perhaps something darker permeated the air. I began to explore, my curiosity getting the better of my apprehension. The books covered a range of topics from history and philosophy to alchemy and occult sciences. It was as if the library was a repository of forbidden knowledge collected over centuries. As I delved deeper into the room, I discovered a locked door tucked away in a corner. It seemed out of place, its modern padlock contrasting with the room's antiquity. What could be so important? or dangerous, that it needed to be locked away. Just then I heard a distant scream so faint that I thought I might have imagined it. My heart pounded as I looked around, half expecting to see someone or something lurking in the shadows. But the room was empty, and the door remained locked as if guarding its secrets. I was about to leave when something caught my eye, an old photograph tucked between the pages of a dusty tome. It showed a group of people, all dressed in vintage clothing and wearing masks similar to those worn by tonight's guests. What chilled me to the bone was the realization that I recognized the setting. It was this very mansion, but the photograph looked like it had been taken decades, if not centuries ago. As I stood there holding the photograph, a horrifying thought crossed my mind. What if this masquerade was not a yearly event, but a timeless one? What if the guests, and perhaps even Eleanor herself, were not what they seemed? And most terrifying of all, what if I had become a part of this eternal, cyclical gathering, forever bound to this mansion and its mysteries? The weight of these questions bore down on me as I left the library, 
the door clicking shut behind me as if sealing away the room's secrets. I returned to the now empty ballroom, my mind racing with both fear and fascination. The mansion, the masquerade, and the library had all conspired to turn this Halloween into an experience that was as authentic as it was horrifying. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the listing. A beautiful, antique-filled suite in a historic building available for just one night. Halloween. And the price was unbelievably low. It seemed too good to be true, but the host had excellent reviews. The only odd thing was a line in the description that read, Perfect for those looking to experience the other side of life. Curiosity peaked, I scrolled through the reviews. Most were positive, talking about the suite's charm and the host's hospitality. But one review caught my eye. It was vague but unsettling. You'll never forget your stay. It's a haunting experience. Despite the ominous review, the deal was too good to pass up. I clicked book and almost immediately received a message from the host, Mark. Looking forward to hosting you on Halloween. This suite has a lot of history. I'm sure you'll find it. Interesting. I marked the date on my calendar, a mix of excitement and apprehension filling me. Had I just booked a beautiful suite for a steal, or had I signed up for something far more mysterious? Halloween was just around the corner and I was about to find out. The building was as historic as the listing had promised, its facade a blend of grandeur and decay. I stepped into the lobby, which was beautiful but showed signs of wear. The air was heavy, as if filled with the weight of untold stories. I approached the front desk where an older gentleman greeted me. Ah, uh, you must be the guest for the Halloween suite, he said, handing me an antique key with a vintage keychain that read, Suite 13. The Halloween suite, I asked, puzzled. He chuckled. It's what we call it around here, you'll see why. I felt a shiver run down my spine but brushed it off. I was probably just letting the atmosphere get to me. I thanked him and headed for the elevator, an old contraption that creaked and groaned as it ascended. Finally, I reached the thirteenth floor. The hallway was dimly lit, the wallpaper peeling in places. It felt like stepping back in time. I found suite thirteen and inserted the key. It turned with a satisfying click and I pushed the door open. The suite was stunning. High ceilings, antique furniture, and a beautiful view of the city. But what caught my eye was the decor. It was filled with vintage Halloween decorations, old-fashioned jack-o'-lanterns, black cats, and even a witch's broom in the corner. As I unpacked, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The room was exactly as advertised, charming, historic, and filled with character. But there was an undercurrent of something else, something I couldn't quite put my finger on. I decided to shake off the feeling and make the most of my stay. After all, it was Halloween, and I was in what could only be described as the perfect setting. But as the sun began to set, casting long shadows across the room, I couldn't help but wonder what the night would bring. As night fell, the atmosphere in the suite changed. What had seemed charming in the daylight now felt eerie in the dim light. The first sign that something was amiss came when one of the lights started to flicker. I tried to ignore it, attributing it to the building's age, but then I heard it, a soft, almost inaudible sound of footsteps. The unsettling part? They seemed to be coming from inside the room. I looked around, my heart pounding, but found nothing. Just as I was about to dismiss it as my imagination, my eyes fell on an old portrait hanging on the wall. It was of a woman dressed in early 20th century clothing. Her eyes seemed to follow me, filled with an emotion I couldn't quite place. Was it sorrow? Anger? A warning? Shaken, I decided to distract myself by exploring the suite. That's when I discovered the locked drawer in the antique dresser. My curiosity peaked. I tried to open it, but it wouldn't budge. Just then, the clock struck midnight, and to my astonishment, the drawer creaked open on its own. Inside, I found a journal, its pages yellowed with age. The entries were written in a shaky hand and spoke of unwanted visits and voices in the night. The last entry was the most disturbing. If you're reading this, then you're part of this room's history now, just like me. I closed the journal, my hands trembling. The room, the footsteps, the portrait, and now this journal. They were all pieces of a puzzle that I was becoming a part of. I felt trapped, like a character in a story that had been written long before my arrival. As I sat there, contemplating what to do next, I heard it again. The sound of footsteps, but this time they were accompanied by a soft, haunting melody, as if someone were humming a lullaby. The sound seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at once, enveloping me in a sense of dread that I couldn't escape. I realized then that this wasn't just a room. It was a living, breathing entity with a history that was unfolding before me. 
And as the clock continued to tick, marking the passage of time, I couldn't shake the feeling that something or someone was waiting for the right moment to make an appearance. I couldn't take it anymore. The humming had grown louder, filling the room with an eerie melody that seemed to come from another time. I lit a candle, its flickering light casting shadows that danced across the walls, making the room feel alive or haunted. Just as I was about to convince myself that I was imagining things, I saw it, a shadowy figure standing near the window. My heart stopped. The figure was indistinct, almost ethereal, like a fragment from a forgotten dream, and yet it was unmistakably there. Summoning every ounce of courage, I spoke. Who are you? The figure seemed to shimmer, and then I heard a whisper so soft it was almost drowned out by the howling wind outside. You're not alone, it said. I felt a chill run down my spine. What do you want? I managed to ask, my voice trembling. The figure moved closer, its form becoming clearer in the flickering candlelight. To be remembered, it whispered, its voice tinged with a sadness that was almost palpable. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the figure vanished, leaving me alone in the room, or so it seemed. The air felt different, as if lifted of a weight it had been carrying for years, maybe even decades. I sat there stunned, the candle still flickering in the dark. The suite, with all its history and haunting beauty, had revealed its secret if only for a moment. And I, the latest guest in a long line of visitors, had become a part of its story. As the first rays of dawn began to filter through the window, I knew that this Halloween would be one I'd never forget. I had come seeking an adventure, a break from the mundane, and had found something far more profound, a connection to the unknown a brush with the other side of life. And so as I packed my bags and left Suite 13, I couldn't help but wonder how many others had stood where I stood, heard what I heard and felt what I felt. The suite was more than just a room. It was a keeper of secrets, a gateway to another realm, and now, a chapter in my own life story. In the shadows of the night, if our tales from unsettling horror stories gave you a fright, press like and let it be known. Subscribe so you're never alone in this haunting journey and share, so others too can be wary. Until our next sinister tale, stay dark, dear listener.